Welcome to a typical world in a 1950s science fiction movie. It takes place in a world similar to the one in which the viewer lives, except there's an existential threat that emerges. So the protagonists explore the mystery. They use science and technology to learn more about it, and eventually the world is a better place because of it. I love sci-fi. I think it's a genre that helps us explore our feelings about the unknown, the future, and the possible. It lets us imagine what-if scenarios and then build out rich worlds that our minds can occupy. It depicts dystopias we should fend off and utopias we should seek. And it teases us with the scintillating possibility that humans may actually be able to build the world we want. So that's why I analyzed how sci-fi has changed since the 1950s. I first went to IMDb to find the top 200 sci-fi films and TV shows of every decade based on user votes. Then I used ChatGPT's API to analyze the contents of each story. It took a few iterations of prompts to get the answers I thought were the most accurate. But eventually, I got a bird's eye view of what's actually happened to sci-fi. These are all the films I looked at. In the 1950s, sci-fi films and TV shows rarely took place in the future. They mostly took place in the present day, so the 1950s. But there's been a steady increase in stories that take place in the future, like the 2013 film Her, about a man who falls in love with an AI. And these days, even films that take place in the present have hints that we're in the future. These worlds are increasingly marked by large amounts of inequality. And these sci-fi worlds have had an increasing amount of suffering. Now, one thing that hasn't changed is that there's usually an existential threat. And there's often a bad guy who either destroys the world or wants to stop the good guys from saving the world. For example, in the 2015 film Mad Max Fury Road, the world is a desert wasteland ruled by a warlord, Immortan Joe, who enslaves women to produce his offspring. So yeah, bad guy. But in more modern sci-fi, all of these factors are more likely to be part of a clearly dystopian or post-apocalyptic world. In Mad Max, the woman enslaved by Immortan Joe escape, and they leave behind a message. Who killed the world? But the protagonists don't just battle a bad guy. In more modern stories, they have to fight society, as in political movements, systemic inequality, devious technology, basically things that feel too big to fix. And it's now more likely for stories to explore inner conflicts, mental health, moral dilemmas, identity crises. And these days, sci-fi stories are almost certain to be a commentary on current social issues. But despite starting off in terrible circumstances, the protagonists almost always make the world a better place. So in a 2020 sci-fi world, we're often dropped into the near future with hints that something has already gone terribly wrong. It's much more likely for the world to have signs of a dystopia. We see lots of human suffering, but also lots of greed and gluttony. The protagonists fight society. They fight the conflicts in their own minds. And eventually they save the world. And it's all a commentary on our reality, often a warning of where we are or what's to come. The narrative arcs of these stories look something like this. Before the story even starts, there are hints that something terrible has already happened. And the plot is basically the protagonist digging out of that to make the world better. But since more modern sci-fi is often a commentary on our world, we try to see where our reality is in these story arcs. And for us, we are here, before things have gone to hell. We see the signs all around us that things could get way worse. Maybe things will work out, but it feels like the worst is ahead of us. But what if things didn't turn out this way? And what if our sci-fi helped us imagine that better future? What if we create spaceships that could explore further than we could have ever imagined? What if we ensure that even the least fortunate among us have reliable housing, food, and healthcare? What if we reject the notion that an economy must produce more and more, but rather embrace the idea that a functioning society is only as successful as its least privileged soul? What if our technological innovations didn't come from efforts to decimate each other, but rather from a constant desire to better each other's lives? I know, I know, it's hard to see that future because we see terrible things all around us. Hunger, disease, mass murder, greed, an increasingly uninhabitable planet. But unlike the world of Mad Max, our world has not yet been killed. 
we can still create a world where the patches of paradise blossom into the wastelands. Maybe that's why it's so important for us to imagine a different future, precisely because it's so hard to see. After all, if we can't see paradise, how can we possibly navigate toward it?